Hey everyone, Hart from Smith & Martin here, and I've been just playing around with the new Emulator Pro 1.5, just getting to know the interface and functions. I'd love to teach you a thing or two about the latest software update. So for those of you who don't know, Emulator Pro is a software that lets you create interfaces for MIDI programs. This means creating touchscreen controllers to navigate through your favorite PC programs. Things like Ableton, Cubase, Serato, Tractor, Resolume, and dozens more of MIDI capable programs. Not only to navigate through, but to do so with touch functionality and complete customization. Let's get started and you'll see. Once you download Emulator Pro 1.5, install it and double click to launch. You'll see the main page here. Here at the bottom right you can register your software and the bottom left is used for software updates that will release continually in the future. Right now we're using the latest, so we don't need to update. The top left you'll see MIDI ins and outs. This is for mapping, so make sure they're set accordingly. This button here is the minimizer. It's actually very important to the template controller building process. You see, Emulator Pro acts as a controller that literally sits on top of programs you wish to control. So for Emulator Pro to work, you need to open up programs you want to work with. This button allows you to minimize Emulator Pro and adjust those other programs to work with Emulator Pro. This does not shut off Emulator Pro, simply minimizes it. To turn off Emulator Pro completely, you simply click Close. Be careful not to close during shows or performances as the close button will make the performance stop running. Now the four main buttons on Emulator Pro's launch screen are Help, which will lead you to downloadable manuals and tutorial videos like this one. This link will be updated as we add content to help our emulator users in the future. There's also this lock button, which will prevent anyone from touching your setup or ruining your mix while you're in the bathroom or just away from the decks. You'll be prompted to log back in with your password. Here we have the Wall app. This is great for hardware like our Elite that's transparent because you can write the audience messages and then invert it so you, they can see it properly. You can also draw images or import images and resize them. There's a clear button so you can restart what you're doing and simply click main to get back to the launch screen. Now this is the pro button and where you will both perform and build your controllers. There's no doubt you'll be spending most of your time here. You click it once to reveal all of your previous save files and click it again to open. I should note that there's a new feature we added. It's so you don't need to use a mouse or keyboard to interact with Emulator, 1, Emulator Pro 1.5. So you can completely build touchscreen templates using a touchscreen. I am using a mouse and keyboard, but that's just optional. I'm using it so you can keep track of the mouse for this tutorial. You can see we opened up a completed template, and this is what one will look like. It looks like this one's for Tractor, and it uses four decks. Since this one's good to go, let's open up a new one by opening the editor. You can right click anywhere on the screen to make the editor appear. You can also click Escape. Here we can see Pablo made this template. We added this feature for people who want to trade their templates or make them available for download. They can add their photos, names, and other information so people know who it's from. If users are collaborating on a template, they can actually write notes to each other on the progress, things that aren't working or things that need to be done. Just exit this and you'll see all the options are revealed for creating your template. If you go down to load and start, you can open up all your saved templates or start a new one like we want to do. Again, you'll see we're back at the template information page. Exit and you'll see all the buttons. You'll see that the editor is separated into sections. There's, there's a constructor section, an object section, Edit, Surfaces, File, Mode, and Helpers. Here you can see all your standard buttons, the play, record, stop, etc. The constructor helps you cut holes to see important parts of the programs you're trying to control. So for example, with Tractor, you might want to see things like the deck or the BPM or the track selection. So to do so, left click on the shape that you want, and then left click on your controller to place it there. You'll have the options to resize and move it with the boxes here. If you want to actually create the hole, you simply click Subtract. Now you can see the desktop right through your controller. This is because we didn't open anything to work with. Once you open a program, you can click Transparency to see the area cut. So let's go open Tractor and work with that. Now you can resize properly and cut areas you need them to see the deck and things like that. 
Press transparency to make this easy, and let's cut some holes. Line them up properly and then click subtract and now you can interact with Tractor directly. It's the same idea with the circle shape. Left click that. If you make a mistake just cover up the hole with another hole. Instead of pressing subtract, click merge. To add actual buttons for mapping, go to objects. You'll see there's a selection of buttons. It will give you numerous options including labeling your own buttons. You simply click the button you want to have on your controller and then left click it to make it appear. Again there's resizing options and moving options. Here under MIDI out parameters you can see you can assign a bunch of details. There's things like numbering to keep track of all the buttons you're making, the MIDI value to assign through other programs for MIDI mapping, and then the channel you want it to be on. If you go down to appearance, you can actually change the label. You can write whatever you want. So let's make a drop the bass button because every DJ needs that. Here you can use the rotate section to rotate the button at any angle you want. Simply input the value and it'll change it. Right under that, there's opacity. It'll change the transparency of your buttons. There's plenty of color options and fill options with various colors to choose from. You can change the order of your button layers from front to back using these buttons here. There's a sliders and crossfader section. You can click the mouse to interact with them. You can actually click mouse mode to interact with any of these buttons. It shuts off any editing options until edit mode is resumed. Here we have numerous knobs starting at different positions for your highs, mid, lows, or effects, though you can just as easily map them as faders. It's all user preference, really. There's XY pads so you can set filter parameters or beat repeats. The encoders include DJ scratch plates and endless knobs. Endless knobs are useful when you're going through playlists with a large amount of tracks. Let's add a DJ scratch plate. You can go to page 2 so there's more room. You can actually have up to 6 pages. You can have multiple pages for effects, scratch platters, and mixing. There's also a decoration section so you can include things like borders and import your own images for decoration. The last part of the object section is tools and more. This includes a keyboard so you can use it right on your touchscreen. There's also containers to keep things organized. Again, all these play, forward, and pause buttons are pretty standard buttons. Here's the pad button to keep things interesting. Arrows are great to map load buttons for decks. You can rotate them in any direction you want and map them to do whatever you want. The flow button can be handy for when you're using multiple pages. If there's ever a button you want to see in the same position on every single page, you can choose to make it float. This is great for a stop all button or anything you would want to see on every page. And to simply make it stop, just unfloat.
Under this edit section, we have the standard undo, redo, copy, and delete buttons. And right under that, we're back to the files where you can save or open up new work. The helper section is useful when aligning buttons and creating symmetrical templates. The ruler helps you align buttons like this. The grid lets you shape buttons to be the exact same size and placed in symmetrical positions. The magnifier lets you grab and resize buttons more easily, especially if you're just on a touchscreen and don't have the accuracy of a mouse. And that's been a quick overview of Emulator Pro 1.5. There's plenty more details in the manual available online, and we're going to have plenty more tutorial videos going into actually building templates for specific DAWs and programs, which will be coming up very soon. Thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe and ask any questions in the comments, and feel free to reach out to us for anything you need.